Bonjour everyone, James here. Welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe de Rene. Join once again by Star Show, Mr. Rene Dupree. Bonjour, bonjour, Rene. Someone's trapped himself. Early Christmas present. Birthday Where? present. It's my 40th it's birthday present to myself. When is that? Got a, got a neat truck. That's right. Got a truck. It's your birthday pretty soon, isn't it? Yes. I'm not looking forward to turning 40. Holy Christ. <laughs> you know, when is it? Is it November or December? I forget. December. December, that's right. Yeah. Uh, what, I remember when I turned 30, I felt like I had a midlife crisis at 30. So you think you're going to die by the time you're 60? Oh, I won't make 55. <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't know. I think I need a change of living, uh, change of diet and like living. So, diet uh, yeah. And, yeah. Healthier lifestyle. I don't, I, I, I don't know, you know. Well, don't get me wrong, is it? Like in my uh, family's the history of rather heart problems or history of uh, cancer so i've done me besides the eating i've never really smoked at all i rarely drink even though you know you keep saying to me stop drinking honestly i don't really drink at all so i liked on that side of stuff i live generally healthy but yeah i could do cut enough a few pounds but we'll get there we'll get there um paul will was with us but he's gone missing again so we will be back um but everyone else who's watching, we are actually, uh, for the first time, we're actually live streaming on Facebook and on uh, X as well. So uh, thank you if you just joined us through them. Uh, we're going to be running the stream on them two platforms for the next um, 20 minutes. And then we're going to close them. And then if you just want to carry on watching the show, join us over on uh, YouTube to carry on the live stream. Uh, besides that, Renee, besides the new truck, everything all good for you? Oh, everything is great in my world. Uh, what about the wrestling world, man? That's what we're here to talk about. All the news and happenings. Uh, we got we Adam go? Copeland we... debuting in AEW. The crowd goes mild. Um, I, I, I've made it no secret. I'm a fan of Edge. But <laughs> Edge, traditionally, every time he does an entrance, he comes out, you know, through the middle. He runs to the left side of himself to, you know, hype up the crowd. And then he normally runs the opposite end of the stage. So someone's appeared. Um, <laughs> well, he, he always done that at WWE. But in AEW, he only ran to the one side because the other side of the arena was empty. Right. Yeah. There he is. There he See is. See how it feels? Paul, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm professional bullshit. Okay. All right. Uh, we were just talking about your BFF, Adam Copeland, making his debut in all amateur hour wrestling. Oh, that's good. I'm happy for him. It's silly, yeah. too. All that video that we, you know, people were like, oh, he's, they're trashing him. I'm like, I love both these guys. I just wanted to make well, a lot of viral. That video went Not viral. It went viral because it was exactly what happened. Listen, when you've been in the business wow. as long as myself and Paul, you know exactly, you know shit. You know more than, like, the dirt sheet writers, right? Can you back me up on that, Paul? As a dirt sheet writer myself, I can concur. <laughs> Man, you're looking like an album cover, or like you're about to do a music video. Who, me? Both of you do. Huh? Me? James has like the montage background, like he's in some sort of like teen. Oh crap! I've just realized I have got the wrong logo. <laughs> and then Renee's yeah. just kind of like a floating head, like he's about to do some sort of, yeah, some sort of ballad. It's Halloween. It's uh, October, buddy. Good stuff. Look at wait. Get get close to the camera, because yeah, this is like too good to be true. So. But. I can't really tell because you look like you're on like a Grateful Dead album cover, but look look again. Do your eyes? Do you have? Yes, you can see the white above your eyes. Holy shit! You have Sam Paku eyes. 
The fuck does that mean? Dude. Are you kidding? This is amazing. How have I never noticed this? I think I've noticed it. I just didn't. I just recently came upon. Hold on. Let me let me just double check. Yeah, Sanpaku Eyes. S A N P A K U. Okay, what does that mean? Is that bad? Is that good? What is it? It's in the eye of the beholder, no pun intended. Uh, James, are you looking it up right now? Because you can read it off. I mean, I can read it uh, off too. Oh, did you want me to read it off? What? Sorry, I was just working out the strings. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll read it off. If you guys can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Actually, I don't know if I can read it off. It'll probably stop the my. Anyways, it's. Where I'll you read can it see. off. What is what? Okay, how do you spell that? S a n p a k u. Basically, when you can see the white either above or below your eyes, you have the potential, the great potential, to do crazy, violent things. Oh well, that's I'm wonderful. Feeling. Okay, what does Sampaku eyes mean? Uh, they're associated with tragedy and violence. Well, okay, this is Chris Benoit, this motherfucker over here. Individuals oh. with yin Sampaku eyes have sclera visible beneath their iris and are supposedly more likely to develop illness or die a tragic death. Oh, gee, thanks, nice Paul. Hope. Those with yang senpaku or sclera that's visible above the iris are thought to be more violent towards others. See, that's the one I meant. I didn't mean the other one. The other yours is above the eye. So I'm more violent yeah. towards others. Look at that. Dude, are you I'm kidding? Not, Look at this. I'm not <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Because I'm the we're, master. We're, we're like we're mm -hmm. brothers, but you've never hurt me. Right, no, I'll never hurt you. Know you. That, right, I don't even have to tell never, you. Do you yeah. really want to hurt me? I love you, brother. I'm trying to help you understand. Okay. When you're in the mirror, you're like, how do I? How? Why? What is that? And now you know, Sam Paku eyes. Sam Paku eyes. Um, okay. James is also your brother. He too, so we are safe. Okay. What's going on, guys? Renee, you should come to tour the UK. Paul, I'm feeling spooky since Halloween. It's right around the corner. Which horror film should I watch? Yeah, man. Give me some... Uh, I want to know, know what else you watch. I'm glad you mentioned oh, that Big that Red like? Machine. Or what, what was the name? Big Red Machine. See, I was like, of course it's Big Red Machine. But then I thought, no, you know what? It's probably something to play on that. So I just threw Machete out there. Y'all are welcome to take that. Let me... Let me show you, Big Red Machine, a few of my recent finds, which you will see here first on Cafe Du Rene Live. It's an exclusive. Exclusive. Hang tight, hang tight while James gets his recommendations together. Okay. He's going to go. Now you got and him share started. Them. You can share them. I'm listening. I'm right here. See, now you got Paul excited because his true passion is in film. Oh, shit. I'm passionate about all of it, man. If I'm involved in something, I'm passionate about it. Right. So, but when it comes to horror horror movies, especially, uh, it gets all it gets Paul and then all tingly inside, you know. That's right. But as I'm far as touring the UK, night this week. yeah, you're gonna watch a horror yeah. movie every night this week. Well, I'm gonna finish I the have. question for Big Red Machine here. Uh, yeah. I actually had a guy message me about La Resistance touring the UK. But terrifying. you have to understand, promoters, I'm not in a position where I need the wrestling business financially. Therefore, I'm not, I don't have one boot lace desperate to get back in the ring. I mean, I'd like to, but it's got to be financially worth it for me. And like I said, I'll be turning 40 years of age. Um, you know, I don't want to sleep on hotel room floors and, you know, I want to be comfortable and I want to be treated, you know, like a professional. So, you know, just um, not forward. Little one here, I think we might have missed it to start the show. Paul, would you appear on Chris Van Fleet's show? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would love to. Uh, I can, well, I can set that up. By the way, I'm I friends with Chris. I don't have full access to the full recommendation, uh, Big Red Machine, James, yourself, and Rune. Uh, but uh, one of my good buddies recently lent me this. This one here is Nine Seven Six Evil. It's Robert Englund's uh, directorial debut. So you can get a better look at it. Okay. Yeah, that cool. was Freddy Krueger, right, Robert England? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not horror. Um, either of these are always fun. I tend to go with the classic House on Haunted Hill, well, Vincent Price. Uh, oh, yeah, the remake I enjoyed. Yeah, the the remake's fun. It gets it gets uh, lost in the shuffle with 13 Ghosts, I think, because they came over in, like, Ghost Ship. A lot of these movies came out kind of in that same early 2000s. So, but you know, the the, fun, the remake's fun as well. But there's always that that original that features the uh, the famous Enos house, which is also the Terry Silver house in Karate Kid Three. So, that is the house in House on Haunted Hill. <laughs> okay. You got him going, chat. You know, you got him going. What's the name of that? What's the name of that eyes again, uh, Paul? Senpaku. Senpuku. Senpaku. Senpaku. I do not have it. Unless I have is... overhead lead, but we all can do that. That's not what it means. It's like, just... Yeah. Oh. Oh. He's a favorite felon. Y'all are related. Oh, yeah. Y'all are related by ocular means. Mm. So I have two more goodies for you that I recently picked up. I'm really excited about them. Uh, Wrestle Massacre? First, one, first one's more horror. Second one's more sci-fi, but a lot of people find it terrifying as well. So uh, we're going to go with uh, this early classic. I'm trying to remember. I believe it was 80, 1980 early. Early, it's like 82 or 81. I can't remember. Maybe 1980. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Bloody Birthday. Okay. This is one of the first uh, children killing adults movies. So, James, this one, be careful, right? Uh, there it is. Yeah, Bloody Birthday. This one is something else. Before oh, there was. Is it there Children was of the Corn? Party, Bloody Birthday. What's that? Children of the Corn. Isn't that the plot where the kids kill hum like adults? Uh, yeah, that one's yeah. more like cult related. This one okay. has a mystical, like a mystical uh, connection as well, because they're all born on the same day. Anyways, this one's really good, very overlooked movie. And then uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, is uh, the Christopher Walken classic, Communion. Okay, this is, I mean, if you want to see Christopher Walken interacting with aliens, this is something else. I like Christopher Walken in uh, yeah, Batman, Batman Returns. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Yeah, he's Shrek, that. that Leatherface is his son in that movie. Um, so, yeah. Um, speaking of children of the... Spear jerker, for those of you who like to celebrate Christmas early... I know we talk a lot about horror on here, and there is a good Jack Frost, Shannon Elizabeth, Carrot scene. It's weird. There's a lot of backstory to that. Anyways, I also like this Jack Frost, a real tearjerker, if you ask Michael me. Keaton. <laughs> Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. this movie is – this is something else. I'm not kidding you. Oh, is that the one where the father dies but goes into the snowman? Yes, yeah. he is. He and then, like, he's like trying to make it to his son's hockey game, but he's going on the pavement and he's melting slowly. Yeah. Okay. You okay, Paul? You okay, Paul? There's the snowman. He's melting. He's melting. Um, speaking of Children of the Corn, did you, did you guys ever see the rep episode of Raw where? Okay, it's like the McMahon, Vince's grandkids are in the fucking ring. And it's like, because Hunter has three girls and Shane has three boys and they all look alike. 
and they're just like sitting, like standing, staring at each other. Like the boys are all lined up, and the girl. It, it reminded me of Children of the Corn. That I believe. Yeah. I've got a picture. Of, uh, there's one here with uh, former President Donald Trump. Oh yeah! Look at that pic. You have that picture. Bring it up. I want to show you Bring something. Up, Bring that picture up. Okay, you notice how Hunter's eyes are like shut? Yeah. Okay. That that means this was like a photo op. Like it's like you know how like people come yeah. in and they all take pictures and then they just walk off. Okay, that's all that was because yeah. you notice how his his eyes are all shut. It's and uh, you notice the puffiness of his face. He was probably well shit eyes. Yeah, he was probably in uh between a cycle here. This was before his heart attack. This I don't know. This is yeah. This ain't got nothing on Nixon and Elvis, all right. All right. We got one from Kane. You gotta bring this one up. Movie as well. It's not really horror or Christmas movie. It's a great, great uh, Elvis movie, uh, and it's an amazing Nixon portrayal too. Uh, I don't know whatever your takes are on Kevin Spacey, but he's phenomenal. As hold on a second, whoa, 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 whoa! Well, right. take Kevin Spacey, not great. <laughs> Kevin Spacey wasn't he allegedly accused of like some really fucked up shit? Yes, yep. I'm not saying he didn't do it. Or I'm not condoning it one way or another, but I'm just saying as a movie, as a film. With an acting performance, I really enjoy it. Colin Hanks is in it uh, as well, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's really fun. But yeah, Michael Shannon as Elvis, I'll give it a chance. But it's really I liked I liked uh, Kevin Spacey and um, what was it? Horrible Bosses. Yeah, he was great, yeah. and he was really good in Seven. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, Will you Paul London or Renee ever return to WWE? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch the show, King. <laughs> Who is your best friend or friends in the business? You look at them. It's right Sorry. here. Right here. Which veteran was really nice to uh yeah. Gilberg. Gilberg was always nice to me. Gilberg? Yeah. He was I think I am he seemed yeah, he was cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, very nice guy. So did I answer your question, Kane? The nicest guy besides me. Scotty too hotty. Scotty, you never seen him get mad? He got mad at me once. Really? I, 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 listen, here's the thing with me. In order to be my friend, I have to piss you off and you have to forgive me. Then we can be friends. Yeah. I know it sounds sure. fucked up, but it's like, in order for me to like trust you as a friend, I have to know that you can forgive me for fucking up. Yeah, it's a form of fighting, man. Too, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. You know so, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> We're friends, Renee. <laughs> I'll forgive you. Oh, I don't know. We fought. We fight too much. Oh, this one's for you, James. UK yeah, wrestler yeah. of all time, Davy Boy or Regal? Davy. Yeah. I love Regal, but Davy. Was one of the first UK guys to actually make it big in WWF and fuck main event at SummerSlam, you know, in the UK in Wembley, IC belt. Shame he didn't get the big push, but neither did Regal. To me, Davey's a bigger star, but I love Regal as well. Would you say Regal had a bigger WCW career than Davey Boy? Oh, <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> Well, oh, shit, Davey. wasn't Davey Boy out with an injury, like, his whole time there? He was certainly there well, longer. That's what ended his... That's what led to his serious drug addictions, so I forgot that's, if it was... That's like, deba that is debatable, dude. Well, yeah, he was on steroids and stuff, obviously, uh, but he's no, no, but, massive. But here's the thing. Did he, did he end up suing? Was there a lawsuit with WCW over that? No, I actually interviewed his daughter about that, and she said he really should have because it was the trap door for the Warriors' entrance. It fucked him up, right? Yeah, he oh, got landed on it. I thought you were talking about Regal this whole time, and I was like, "What? When, when did they?" <laughs> You're talking about Davy Boy. Yeah, it was the trap door. It was the Warrior trap door that fucked up his back, right? That's right. Yeah, and that's 
like in her words, so I can only go by what she said. Right. After that, she saw a big difference in like the amount he was using and stuff and just his personality and things like that. Right. Damn, that's sad. So I can only go by what she said. Yeah. Uh, does Paul have any memories working for 2CW? Uh, is that Canada, I believe? I thought that was New York, wasn't it? Might be. Oops. It might be northern New York. Yeah, I think Rochester, maybe. Bin Hamim, that was his fucking uh, promotion. Two yeah, but I think I might have worked there. See, because I feel like we crossed paths. So for all you wrestlers out there who are just still pretty starting out or just whatever, uh, I still won't do this because it's like whatever, but uh, we have social media now. You're kind of document stuff. But either which way, journal your travels and the location and possibly who you worked and possibly where the building, what the name of the building was and what town. Document all this stuff in a journal and put a date on it. Like, believe me, it may not mean fuck all to you now, but later on, like, you're going to feel that it's going to mean a lot. And you can put notes in near that, whatever. But, you know, document your travels and your shows, and possibly your opponents as well, if you can. And, um, believe and me, that's one of my biggest regrets is not having done that from the start. From a business standpoint, uh, whenever you go to a town, when you're working for a big company, uh, write the attendance, write the gate, write where you were at in the card and who you worked. And write your payoff. Then if you go back to that same town, compare notes and compare everything, especially the payoff. But now I think contracts in the WWF have all changed, right? It's just like one flag guarantee from what I heard. Well, so you just never know. Sometimes promoters deal with a bunch of different talent, so they might not remember exactly what y'all agreed upon last time and Mm. Yeah, give you a, a hard number to say. This is what we had, you know. But, uh, wow. There's a good one. So, I know I didn't yeah. really answer the question, but I don't think I did. No. I don't even remember that question. Ultimo <laughs> Dragon is coming to my small Canadian town. You have, yes, I do, as a I matter of fact. PCW, though. I will be back there at some point. I feel like they've contacted me recently. Sorry, I didn't remember the con. The question. 2CW. I thought two CW went out of business. Unless here's the thing, man, with these indie promotions, there's like so many. I don't remember. <laughs> no, but there's so many indie promotions that had the same fucking name, the same initials, the same everything. Already started. You're more likely to get CTE now because you have the Sam Paku eyes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You look like you look like one of James' fellow Englishmen, Marty Feldman. The great Marty Feldman, one of my favorite comedian, comedic actors um, from Young Frankenstein um, with Gene Wilder. You know that movie. Come on, Renee. You like classic movies. Good, real stuff. I know the name, Young Frankenstein. You know that movie, James, right? You know Marty Feldman. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love um, that movie. Um, Sam Packer so yeah. Lies. Anyway, okay, so I'm a psychopath. It's gonna fucking be that violent. That tattooed in uh, how do you got or whatever kanji or something? Yeah, oh, there he is. Marty Feldman. And I'm sure I look just like that guy too, huh? I mean, oh, part God. of it half, half that, <laughs> not the face structure. Well, kind of. You have a similar nose. That's a strong nose. Yeah. It's crooked too. Hey, did you get back elbowed by Booker T? Did Come Booker on. T back elbow him too? He's playing Igor. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, come on. Come on, guys. Come on, I didn't man. Get back elbow you, man. <laughs> Don't ever compare the two. Um, so back to this question, Ultimo Dragon, <laughs> yes. Two thousand yeah, dragon, does he brag about his money? No, never. What's up? 2008, I flew into the one and only time I worked in Mexico was for Dragon Mania. 
that is a Ultimo Dragon promoted event in Arena Mexico. And I work the main event of a sold out Arena Mexico uh, myself, Atlantis, and another top Mexican guy that I can't remember versus Tatsumi Fujinami, Ultimo Dragon, and Mystical. Really? So that was a, a big highlight, you know. I mean, was this before he went to? Was this before seeing Kara? Yeah, or? he got hired shortly thereafter. But he was uh, very popular. Um, but kind of like standoffish, not the friendliest guy in the world. Maybe he's not a fan of gringos. Were you not there when they hired him? I was not. I was in oh, Japan. But weren't we there? I, no, I feel like I was definitely there. I think it might have been in Mexico when they tried him out. Okay, see, so the only time I went to Mexico was for that Dragon Mania. That was a year oh, after yeah. I left. Or maybe yeah. it was San Diego. I, I specifically remember him being at the arena. But like San Diego. Like, it's German for a whale's vagina. Cool. <laughs> I like I like Ultimo Dragon, man. He's he's really cool. He's, he's a good fun. guy. He's a good guy. A little braggadocious, but yeah, he's a little. I was about to say, yeah. I'm like, okay, you make more money than we do. We get it. We get it. Yeah, yeah. You like to go to Italy and buy fashion, and you <laughs> know. Oh, this is another boat. Awesome. What? No, I was just saying. Oh, this is a different boat. Thanks for showing me that. A different boat. Yeah, Ultimo Dragon. Never mind. Who the fuck? Okay, it was Atlantis and Ultimo Guerrero. Those were my partners. Oh, I said Ultimo Dragon. No, no. My partners were Atlantis and Ultimo Guerrero. My opponents oh, awesome. were Ultimo Dragon, Fujinami, and Mystico. See, I'm, I was not big on Lucha, Lucha history. I didn't know how big a deal these guys were. Oh, man. It's a lifeblood. Yeah, they're, they're a big deal, and that was kind of a that was a big uh, big thing. Uh, That's the only time uh, you've been in Mexico. That was it. Um, not really a place I care to go to. Please get Renee down to Mexico yeah. and start doing the the Mark Jindrak stuff. Come on. Well, I'm too old now for that. But I I I do know if I would have went went down there, I would have gotten over with the girls. And the and yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, you puppy, just... you silly, you silly yeah, goose. You know, oh, you got potato for me. He's he showing up an impact. Kid, what? Yeah, he's actually going to show up an impact day after the big pay per view, Bound for Glory. Who is this? He's be wrestling the six movie. Oh, that's the. A... Freaking awesome. Dude, every time we mention, so I don't want to sound braggadocious here, but I'm just stating facts. People come on this show, good things happen to them. Look at Maven. Things happen. I mean, seriously, things happen. Good things happen. Just saying. Still waiting for it to happen to me, Renee. <laughs> These good are things. you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Love seeing the clips of Paul serenading the crowd on the way to the ring at so-called pro wrestling sounding good paul sounding real good oh please oh, explain to me what this was please tell me what what was i sing my entrance man come on where you been pal oh you mean like that time in england when you you still do that yeah yeah that's 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 my shine um <laughs> do you still wear the space suit no man no come on are you kidding i don't know as I've progressed into the late Vegas stage Elvis part of my career, then, you know. You, you wear a jump shoot to the ring now, don't you? I have more interaction with the audience. You you wear a jumpsuit to the ring, don't you? It's a, it, it's a full covering. I wouldn't know if I would call it a jumpsuit exactly, but, you know. 
Is that because you're self-conscious about your physique and your older age or? No, oh. it's just, it looks different. Um, it's a look that I enjoy for the shenanigans that I, uh, bring to the table. And, um, are you trying to copy Scott Hall and his TNA run? Remember that when he dressed up like Elvis? Body. Someone brought some other, uh, some some personality or somebody to my attention a week or two ago and they're like is this what you're doing i was like i don't know who this is but it was bizarrely it was like very very bizarre how similar i was like no i'm not you know i'm just like a bad creepy lounge singer reject you know like i'm just like i'm I'm the guy who's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's <laughs> well, hold on a second. Didn't you have a role where you were playing Elvis? Yeah, that was a couple years ago. I was, that was more of like a proof of concept type deal. Oh. But I've always really enjoyed Elvis. With that being said, I did pick up this bad boy on Saturday. Whoa. Yeah, man, the new Whoa. Arizona Federation heavyweight champion. Okay, so hold on now. So that means you're the Compton Mania champion. That's it. You're the Arizona. What other titles do you have that I'm not aware of? Well, that would get us kicked off. A, uh, no, I got no. That's it. Well, hopefully we'll be wrestling each other coming up here in the new year for Great North Wrestling. Oh, yeah, that'd be great in um, the North. In the north, uh, well, it's not that great in the winter time because it's freaking cold. But uh, it is a very, very good promotion, very professional, well run, good attendance. Um, and they were inquiring about my friend, Mr. London. And I'll Those be you there November fourth. There are no promoters who want me to, to come to your town. Book Paul London at gmail dot com. Again, that is book. Paul London at gmail.com. It doesn't get any easier than that to remember that, but it doesn't go to me. So if you're some weirdo sending uh, dick pics and foot pics and all these other pics, go ahead and send them because they go to a lawyer who's a friend of mine who also works as my booking manager. Uh, so send whatever you want, uh, but I don't see it. So all, all the bullshit and nonsense gets filtered out. Um, but uh, However, yeah. you can send dick pics to... My co-host James, he enjoys that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. How good is Nakajima from Noah? Because he has not signed a new deal. Oh, and either go to New Japan or America. Would he do well in the States? Um, Nakajima is trained by Kensuke Sasuke. You know who, who that is? Power Warrior. Uh, he's a legit badass. He's not very big, but he's like a three-time, I think, kickboxing national champion. Uh, a little bit on the cocky side. He takes liberties. I told you about that, right, Paul, when I was over there last year and there was a, a Noah DDT bout. And he slapped hey, the shit out of the DDT wrestler and knocked him straight out cold. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. One open hand slap, laid him out. The kid had to get rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. Um, well, yeah. All Excuse me? It's all Temple. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, he, he he's legit as far as credentials and MMA. So I know he, he had some heat there with the office because of that. So I'm not sure. And he actually, he was in the dojo, the New Japan dojos at 15 years old. Training. So I don't know. Yeah. But as far as talented, yes, extremely talented. Renee, are you ever coming to Winston Salem? Hey, isn't that where uh, there's like witches? That's okay. Aren't okay. you on that? You're not on that. I thought you were on that. Um. Okay, so 
when I went to North Carolina, some guy approached me about going to WrestleCat. I gave him my information. I haven't heard anything. And then the one promoter was going to reach out for me. But look, again, I don't need this financially. I'm not desperate for fucking, you know, yeah, booking. That was the I have Somebody a set price. WrestleCade, the weekend after Thanksgiving, Black Friday weekend, WrestleCade. Yeah. Get Renee to pre on there because we can do a live. Oh, and how cool would be have a live cafe? Yeah, was- we talked about that. We're 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 seeing about trying to do that at the big event as well. Also in November. So um No, yeah, I fly lot. out I fly dude, right after the signing, I fly go right to the airport, fly right back home. There you have your travel. Yeah. It's a well, fucked it- up flight. <laughs> well, let's look at when there's a block earlier in your schedule, so you're not rushed, anyways. Yeah. Um, and let's let's try and figure it out. A lot. We could put a TV with James's head. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> well, I actually know because Jonah lives in New York, so that would have been perfect. Jonah could have been like on stage and we do a live. James via satellite. Right. Uh. Just a Coming voiceover to in the background. But seriously, yeah. Winston Salem, isn't that where there's witches? Or is that yeah? Salem witch trials. Salem, Massachusetts, dude. Yeah, Massachusetts. Somebody book me in Salem, Massachusetts. I want to go see the witches. You're turning into one of these fucking witch people now. No, I just I don't know. A warlock. <laughs> That's cool. Bonjour. I'm with you. Castle Stalin, man. Bonjour, René James et Paul. Great to see you again. What are your experience when we're voicing for video games? Any funny memories from that wrestling? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks, Emil. Um, ripping Emil's me off. My, my father. Uh, my father. Very yeah, no, thank you, Ricky. Any f- funny? No. I was by myself in this little room and just read off a script. It was. Did you have a any different? It was like a trailer or something, or where was it? It was in this dude's house in like Cape Cod. What? Did you ever voice over for like the WWF video games? Yeah, but I thought it was like we usually did it similar to the toy scans, where sometimes they had that trailer outside. It looked like almost like a porta potty, like a honey wagon type trailer with. Okay. But had a the computer, time, it, and we would do the voiceovers in there. The one time I might have did it more than once, but the one time I remember doing it was at this guy's. We were on, we we're somewhere in the Northeast touring, and it was at this guy's house. And like, I'm thinking Cape Gerard for some reason. It was at a guy's house. Must have been nice. It was like a small little house and like an extra bedroom. And you had like this little makeshift studio. Like, like Renee, that. come into this back room, please. <laughs> Wait. When you enter the studio, it's best if you just robe fully for better acoustics. Now, please. Hey, sweetie, I got San, San Puco eyes. I'm going to kill you, apparently. What? I, no, nobody said that. Jesus. Yes, <laughs> so I'm going to be violent and murder somebody. What does it have to be her? Well, who else is it going to be? I don't leave the house. Oh, well, go find a bad person. Okay. I'm sure there's plenty up there in the woods. All you psychopaths live in the woods all away from society. I'll just go kill a moose. No, no actually, man, I'll, prob- an animal. I'll probably do more time in prison for killing a moose than I would for killing a person up here in Canada. Yeah, I'll do that, man. What the animal do? Don't do that. All right. For Paul London, from what you joked in an old shoot interview with Kendrick, is it true Benno is a big Pokemon RPG fan? That was Brian's info. I never had that discussion with Chris. Hold on. Uh, he brought if his Daniel, his son, was into it, then maybe because James, 
like he is somewhat familiar with it because of of his son. So James, but, like the kid, like the toys and games that your kids play, you find yeah. yourself like being entertained by it, like turning into a little kid again. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you have to interact with them and play with them, and uh, you know, fa uh, fatherly son bonds. So yeah, taking it. My kids play the PlayStation a lot, so I join in with them. Paul, do you ever want to have kids? Next I put question. Paul off kids. <laughs> huh? Next question. Off kids. Next question. I don't know. We never talked about that. I don't see myself ever having children. Never say never. You have pee pee. I do. What's up, boys? Paul, appreciate you taking the time to talk to me on Insta. David Gordon Green should stay away from horror. Exorcist believer who has horrible views. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you gonna go see that one? Great. Huh? You gonna go see that new Exorcist movie? I heard it was a shit. There you go. I don't no know. Good. Have you seen it? No, I probably. I like David Gordon Green. I just don't like his his take on horror stuff. That's all. Uh. I'm not like the biggest Exorcist fan as it is. I like the original and I appreciate it, but uh, yeah, it's like, eh. The original still fucking creeps me yeah. out. Yeah, it was one of the first, uh, it was one of the first movies where people were throwing up at the theater. No and shit. Throwing up. Yeah, that was one of the, yeah. They would be fainting as they walk out. Yeah. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, before we get to the next one, so people who's joining us on Facebook and on Twitter, thank you. I'm going to be closing them streams down now, so if you just want to carry on watching us, hop over to our YouTube channel where we'll be carrying on live. Also, uh, Renee, uh, tell everyone the um, announcement for Saturday night and what are we doing. What are we doing? Oh, so I'll be in Montreal for a virtual signing and a show with Sylvain. La Résistance. So we've decided, well, actually, it'll be during the day. So we're going to live stream during the day while we're doing the virtual signing and maybe do like a Q&A. Right? Why not? And then we're going to tape the match and you'll be able to watch La Resistance live from Montreal. Uh, last time there was technical difficulties because we're on Prince Edward Island in the middle of nowhere so it was kind of hard to get reception but we'll be in Montreal, bigger city, better Wi-Fi. Who are y'all working, do you know? I have no idea. I'm and I'm sure, I'm sure like they're top contenders. I'm sure they're training hard for this opportunity. Is it already cold up there? Fuck, dude, no. It's it, like global warming is a real thing. I'm wearing shorts in October. That is that is unheard of in Canada. I'm walking around in t-shirt and shorts during the day. I could literally go on the beach and walk the beach. That I'm, I'm 40 years old. I've never seen that ever. That's oh, is it, where you're at? Is it, all the time. I'm not complaining. Is it is it uh, is it warm in England too? It's all right. We're getting seventeens, eighteens. It's quite it's quite pleasant, especially for my job because I work outside. Well, it's like twenty five here today. Yeah, Celsius. You, yeah, Celsius. Yeah, over here as well. Yeah, see the Americans. They're the only one that does Fahrenheit because they have to be different, right, Paul? In the, in the imperial system. <laughs> USA, USA. You oh, have... Renee, you see the video I sent you? Which one? About the debt America's in. The debt? Trillions. It's oh, yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, they're crazy. like uh, 30-some trillion dollars in debt. Yeah. If you guys want to talk down on America, you go somewhere <laughs> else and do it. You don't do that with the red, white, and blue. Because tonight... America. In that very ring, we're going to get you. We're going to send you from pillar to post. And we're going to hit you in the middle of the ring with this super manipulator, masturbatory, blaster 
duster, and you're going to be laying down for the one, two, three. USA, USA. Uh, we don't do that anymore. Uh, right. Tough guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Did, did you say, uh, did you say Saturday we're doing the um, fast lane watch along on Patreon? That's tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, tomorrow we're doing Fastlane on Patreon. So if you're not yet signed up to Patreon, it's only five bucks. Watch um, watch Fastlane with myself, James, Jonah. Um, I can't do that to my friend Paul because he he just can't take that. You know, it's too much. That sounds like a Redbox movie. Fastlane? Doesn't it? Well, okay. The only reason why I'm doing the watch-alongs is on the pay-per-views because I can't figure out how to get the fucking network off my TV. I can't figure out how to, like... <laughs> is there not a movie called Fastlane? There's got to be some shit movie called Fastlane. I'm sure there is. I think there is. But I'll be honest with you. I didn't mind a, a few of the pay-per-views I watched. They actually wrestled. They gave the guys time. Like If you get a guy sure. like Walter on there, you know, he, I, I like his work. I like seeing what he can do, you know? But... Like watching the Jizz trying to have a 30 minute match. Sorry. No. I don't care how hard he works and how much he does for the company. Uh, he's not a fucking 30 minute guy or or even 20 minute guy when it comes to being a fucking. Anyway. Sorry. There you go, Paul. There was a fast lane series with your friend Stephen Bauer in it. I knew there was a fast lane. Stephen Bauer's awesome, dude. You've seen Scarface, Renee? Of course. He's uh, Al Pacino's best friend in it, who, spoiler, Al Pacino kills. Okay. Um, thoughts on Russo? I've never met him. How about you, Paul? Never met him. You never met him either? I've interviewed I'd be, him. I'd be interesting to, like, talk with him, you know, if we were at a convention and, like, we were at a bar or something, like, whatever. It would be, you know, it'd be interesting to hear his philosophy and shit. Uh, just his thoughts on stuff, like how, you know, like you know. But I, uh, I was entertained one way or another uh, by stuff that he did. I'm not gonna say all of it, but um, you know, all these years later, people are still. They find themselves talking about brawl for all, and and you have to think that, like in theory, the concept is very interesting. Um, and you do kind of wonder, like, who is a legit tough guy sometimes, or you know, who's full of shit. And that's where it gets very high schooly, where usually it's the ones who bark the loudest or the, the ones that go down the fastest and the you know the easiest. Um, so. But, you know, that's an interesting thing. And, like, it's now in its own little time capsule. Um, it's interesting watching that, like, Dark Side, how, you know, it was all kind of engineered just to see Bradshaw get knocked out. According to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, according to him. So, so yeah, I'd be interested in, like, talk, you know, it'd be interesting to, like, talk to him. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, fuck this guy. Right, you'd give him a chance. You wouldn't. Like yeah, so many... I don't know him. I don't know him. And like just in the interviews that I've seen, he seems like <laughs> a very talkative, uh, you know, New York kind of guy. And I like, you know, I like that kind of energy. Uh, so that, that's, that's why I like you, Paul. That's why we're friends because you'll you won't go by hearsay because if <clears throat> a lot of people in this business, if they hear bad things and multiple people say bad things, they'll automatically pass judgment on a person uh yeah yeah you have to kind of measure it you know and i'll make my own decision on whether i like somebody not because you know what i mean yeah and i i think it's i think it's bullshit when uh fans try to get on guys you know it, it depends like to a degree but i think i think um I think there is a level of guilt by association depending on what's going on, but 
but I, I do think it's, uh, it's tough for, uh, for some, for certain guys. Cause you know, you might have, uh, friends who are on the shit list. Um, and, and so then you kind of have to like decide, uh, how you navigate that friendship sometimes because then everything gets put under like a magnifying glass and oh can i fucking use an example of me and you yeah okay so like in 04 when holly basically turned the entire locker room against me and then i remember i thought we were going to ride together and you, and you were like pretending like you didn't see me like whistling to yourself and you basically told me listen man like it took me a long time to win over the locker room and like i don't want to get heat and i, I appreciate don't know you saying that. No. Yeah. well you did you did come on no 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 i'm not call- no no i'm not calling you out and like oh fuck you paul no no i understand why now that i'm older um but that's I just, just the way it is doing. no no cuz that's the way it is like a veteran like that will turn your friends against you and like heat through association and uh well, yeah, the heat by association thing is one thing, but I would never, I've never, I've never turned against you or would no, never. You were, no, no, but we couldn't ride together because if you would have rode with me, yeah, that would have been huge heat, it's right? I mean, yeah, the whole thing sucks. But that just shows school. like how fucked up that culture was back then and just the way yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty silly. But anyway, we're not there. We're doing good. We're on the cafe. We're healthy. On the cafe, we get to play video games all day. Jerk off. Uh. Better legend, Goldberg or Warrior? Warrior. Warrior. Looking good, boys. Looking real good. Hey, Paul, any stories of Ivan Pusky? Nice bling bling, Renee. That's uh, a cross with my father's ashes on it. Okay. What was the last part of that question? Any stories of Ivan Putsky? What was there was like a last part of that? I oh, I don't know what it that said. That is bling bling. He was talking about the cross. Oh. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No, it is that is cool actually. I remember you telling me about that. Father's ashes. Um, yeah, give me some Putsky stories, dude. Well, I mean, he wasn't like the most technically sound guy, so it wasn't like I went there and learned everything. But he certainly. Um, you know, I think for anybody who's been in the ring with me, I lay I lay my stuff in uh, to a degree where you know it's certainly not fake. Like I'm certainly laying it in, and yep. there's also a way that I'm going about it where I'm not leaving a bruise or or, or injuring anybody um, or sending them to the hospital. Um, but you are going to be battered if you're in the ring with me, and that's that's what I initially picked up from him because uh, I had been to other schools or like I would say another another I've been around other so-called professional wrestlers that were like on the cable access show and um, you know I, I met up with them like at a boxing ring or something at some rec center and I was like doing like already doing like bigger and better bumps than these like veteran guys were these like weird cowboy and like a bubble guy or something like this weird this bullshit you would see on like a cable access wrestling show and it was hilarious but um you know so they didn't you know they're the kind of people that would like shake do the shit handshake like all light and like the, do that. the three finger oh yeah the wet fish um so so with putsky that was like one of the first times i was really getting clubbed and kind of like battered like like you like you do in the business especially for his days yeah and um but in terms of you know like chain or even really like really steadfast you know solid psychology there wasn't a whole lot of that like his psychology was um really kind of like find your openings and take over and then you know he really accentuated facial, you know, making facial, like funny facial expressions. And he would always say, you know, 
don't don't feel stupid, you know, like people are gonna be laughing, like make the craziest face you can. And like he would do all that shit when he would like row the boat and shit like on a headlock, and he'd be like like just this but wild fucking to get over with Vince, power. that's exactly what you had to do. He loved yeah. that. So he, yeah, so he would he would say, you know, people are gonna be laughing at you. And this was his big line. He'd be like, but you're going to be the one laughing on the way to the bank. Um, so, you know. <laughs> I will I will agree with, and this that's why I liked wrestling with Paul, because I was always told as a heel I needed to be more aggressive. And when I wrestled Paul, when I had the heat on him, he would fight back, but he would lay his shit in to the point where it actually, like, you fucking little prick. Like it was, it was, it was stiff enough to where it made me like angry, and I get more aggressive on you. But it made the match greater. Yeah. Yep. Selling's always the way to go. Yeah, man. And you know, having different la- like different gears to your offense as a heel is important. Um, not smothering a guy. I remember working Regal, funny enough, one time, and he just smothered me, and it was really frustrating. But he was also doing it to like force me to fight back because I had no other choice. Otherwise, it would have literally been like a squash match. Um, same thing with Finlay in like Korea or something in like South Korea. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was I was fortunate to be brought in by by a guy of that stature who'd had those kind of experiences. And then obviously, like his son Scott. Uh, who was in WWF for a while with like the light heavyweight title tournament. Um, and then he like blew his knee out, I think with Brian Christopher, like a pay-per-view. I think it was on uh, Raw. I remember was it, watching, I was it pay-per-view or Raw? I think it was a pay-per-view, but I could be wrong. But he showed up then later in WCW. He's kind of like this like pirate looking. He looked yeah. awesome. He was badass. I always loved uh, Scott Putsky, but fortunately he came – and trained me a lot uh, as well and really helped me uh, a tremendous amount. Um, and so I, I owe those to everything. I mean, they're, they're just really wonderful people too. Just really, really good people. And I'm just really thankful. Uh, that training with them was like, okay, like I, I can do this. Is that in and Texas? He, 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 yeah, this is in Austin. He was my first manager. Ivan Putsky was. He- yeah, he was my first ever manager. And, like, my first match was in front of, like, a 1,000 people uh, at the old, like, Austin City Coliseum, which is now torn down. Um, and he, would he like, got on the mic after my victory and was like, this guy's going to be a star and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, and I taught him. It was, like, a plug for the school, obviously, but right. it didn't really, like, it, I, you know. But yeah, he was my first manager for like my first like handful of matches. Did he help get you booked anywhere? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, like, dude, I, that wasn't really his deal, you know. There's people right now, because you know Lance Storm had a school for a few years. Does he not have it anymore? No, thank fuck. Oh, God. Because there's people going around saying that they were trained, trained by Lion Storm that don't even know how to lock up, can't hit the ropes. And I'm not just talking one – I'm like I've met nearly half a dozen. If I said I haven't heard something like this before, I'd be lying. About, about the same person, Lion Storm? <laughs> Yeah, just people who had gone there and then like they felt like they didn't like they ended up having to go other places and and that's common, you know, like some places just they're gonna teach us I don't know. I don't know. But if you're looking to get into the business, stay tuned. Stay real tuned. Oh yeah, we got some announcements. And hey, what a great place to plug in on here, right? Greatest wrestling feud. I have to go to the bathroom. Jesus and Satan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Vince versus God. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels and God versus the McMahons. That was the greatest wrestling feud ever. 
Renee in his bladder. <laughs> I'm trying to get comfortable. I need a new gaming chair or something. What is it? Uh, great interesting feud. Paul. What do you think is it like? What What are some of your favorite feuds? It don't have to be the greatest feud ever, but what are some feuds you you yeah. enjoyed? I mean, Savage and Hogan. Um, uh, did you enjoy the Bretton. feud? Did you enjoy just that blow off match? Well, it lasted for a bit because obviously it ran to the summer as well when they had the tag match against each other with Zeus and Beefcake. And Sherry was started getting involved. Um, Heart Foundation for uh, Stone Code or America. That was pretty enjoyable. I love that. Canada versus America. Yeah, well, America versus the rest of the world. Yeah. I <laughs> Let's love call that. it how it is. <laughs> Um, staying against the NWO, most underrated pay per view is that Canadian Stampede pay per view. Oh, it's great, it's, it's only like underrated. four matches, but it's great. Yeah, uh, greatest feud, you gotta say Austin McMahon, surely. Who knows? Uh, let's see, I mean, the thing well, all the place in the territories and yeah you do it you know uh well though thank you do you guys ever cross a point where everything stops being surreal in wrestling except and paul you saw to tank as a dante as kids but now you walk past and they get to tank in the locker room <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> It's weird because <laughs> I've I've watched you like growing up, and there's been times we've been having a conversation off off the podcast. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, like covering on. yourself in baby oil and shit. Ridiculous! Come on! <laughs> Moisturize oh, I like... it. <laughs> yeah, we having conversations, and you start moisturizing all your skin and your body. <laughs> Buffalo Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. What was the question again? Uh, let me get it back up. So, what, what, uh, was there? A, uh, do you guys ever cross a point oh, where yeah, things I mean, stop being surreal? Try to keep a healthy, um, just a, a continued appreciation for the ability and the fortune to do this because it's a wild, it's a wild ride. I mean, it really is bizarre. Just you know, I'll go into a locker room and. kind of survey the, the landscape and you know just seeing the colorful characters and just the variety and it's just yeah it's fun you know at the end of the day the whole thing is fun and it's a show and it's a performance but but also there's that chance of illusion where you can really make the people believe and and just i don't know just having that opportunity to do all that at whatever level it's a real privilege you know i mean it really is so yeah. um but it is surreal when I get to when it, I mean it, it never gets old really when I see like a naked Indian Native American warrior by the shower or, or something. <laughs> it's it's to a awesome. lesser degree. For, it's it's a, to a, I mean it's a lot lesser degree to me. But you know I've grown up being a fan since being three or four year old. I've been watching wrestling for about thirty years, and. It's great doing the show, but sometimes it's surreal. The people who I've spoken to, obviously, speak to you, you know you and Renee are friends of mine now. But like I've had the opportunity to interview yeah. Jake the Snake Roberts and Kurt Angle and yeah. Rob Van Dam a few times. Like for me as a fan, it has been surreal, and I don't take it for granted at all. Yeah, you do. I don't take you. Well, I take yeah. you for granted, Renee. Asshole. What are you hiding in the dark? <laughs> his wife <laughs> with them ugly bugly eyes what they called <laughs> if you had to put the lights on your wall would be like adorned with just like body parts <laughs> god that is creepy how has nobody commented on the Sam Paku art uh, we're on this one now really why me I think, 
I think it's the heaviest bunch bench press. press. I think you bench, bunch press. press? Um, I think you meant bench press. Maybe bunch. There's a bunch of weight. Uh, for me at least, I would say my heaviest probably like two thirty. But I would do like reps. I never really maxed out. I never saw the point of it. No, it's stupid. I did, and that's probably why building. my shoulders. Huh? You're not building anything off of just one fucking rep. Like it's stupid. It, that's ego lifting. That's stupid. I did that when I was a teen. You know. Uh, but you're so young. Like, you do stupid I shit. Do at least six or eight reps. No point. Yeah, I can barely. I can't even do two thirty now on the bench anymore. My shoulders are so bad. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't like fucking yesterday or in the last decade. Right. Best to never win the big one. Rude Jake Dusty Razor. Personally, I say Piper, but curious about what. Oh, he must mean the WWF title. I say yeah. Hennig. Good call. Hennig? No. I agree. Uh, I'm a big Rick Rude fan. I'm a big fan of all of them, but yeah, Mr. Perfect. Easily. Even DiBiase as well. Like how big of a heel he was at the time. Who? Well, that was the original. That was the original plan. They was gonna put the belt on him, but Did Honky wouldn't. Yeah, at WrestleMania, but Honky Tonk wouldn't drop the title, Matt, the IC Matt title, to Macho. Mississippi. You what? <laughs> massive, massive heel. He's he's a bigger heel than he's ever been in Mississippi. Dude, talk about art imitating life. Like a I agree with you, though. He was like, he was always a solid heel. And I always felt like he had the best uh, backflip clothesline out. I liked, I stole the, uh, this, this Yeah. Up. Yeah. Who are your top five worst in-ring wrestlers who made it to the top of the business? Warrior, Moxley, Kali, love the show, guys. <laughs> top five. Kali is just catching strays out here, man. <laughs> okay. Kali. Top five. I like Kali, but in ring, even for a giant. Yeah, but like he went to India. And he drew over 70,000 people in that country. What do you consider right. making it? Like, I mean, is Zeus on this list? Because he's fucking atrocious. Well, Zeus was over, man. <laughs> I loved Zeus as a kid. Uh, it's got to mean like more than one attraction shot, right? I think um, he said in ring. Because, I, I mean, know. look, like, Warrior wasn't the best, but he did draw money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Not to be disrespectful, but Jinder, like, that experiment just failed big time. Um, I like okay, Jinder, so but not as a champion. In, in <laughs> India, so Jinder, yeah, Jinder Mahal, so, like, He's of Indian descent, but he's actually Canadian, right? Yeah. And I think the people from India, unless you're purebred Indian, you know what I mean? Maybe like yeah. Akali, for example. As to where, and I hate to use myself as an example, but when I toured France, the French people knew I wasn't from France, born and raised in France. But I, I was of French descent, but I still got over in that country. You know what I mean? Like when I would sign autographs, there might have been one or two like said, oh, yeah, you're not really from France or whatever. But, but they, sold, they, they sold you and pushed you as a French guy over a French Canadian. No, no, because, but me. here's the thing. Here's the thing. In 2004, when I was tagging with Kenzo or champions or whatever. 
I remember. Oh, yeah, because we went in from you. <laughs> so, yeah, watch along that one day. Yeah, we should. Um, the largest news right. channel in France flew to the Carolinas and spent a whole day with me. And I, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. They spent the whole day. They, they the office put me up at the TV hotel, and then I, I spent the whole day like doing my daily routine. And I, they, they followed me around the arena the whole day. And um, after you beat us, you can watch it on YouTube. It's called the Set Avit. That means from seven to eight. It's an hour long broadcast. It's on YouTube. Um, but in that, there's um, there's like um. Um, this was the day after you beat us. I don't know. I we might have been the champions, but I think we we're on the show. It was a SmackDown taping. Me and Kenzo were working with Rob and Ray. Um, but there's oh. um. Anyway, you can watch it on YouTube. And in that reportage, in that report, they actually said that I was actually French Canadian from a small town in Canada. That I wasn't from France. But that that episode, the set I did, had over six million people in France alone watch it. Not counting other French speaking countries in Europe, such as Belgium, parts of Switzerland, Morocco. Morocco, South right? Africa. Africa, right? Algeria. Right. So when I toured over there from 2008 to 2010, we did about five 10 to 14 day tours over there. We sold out every major arena in that country. Wow. Uh, me and Rob worked a program together over there. He can attest to it. Uh, me and Test, the first time we went over there, 10 shows in a row, back to back, sold out every single night. But as opposed to Jinder's position where he's of Indian descent on television saying he's from India, but I think the fans in India don't buy it like the fans in France bought me or accepted me. Yeah. yeah. Nobody in India yeah. it's like that. But India, like when he went over there, they didn't draw that good a house because they did two shows back to back. And I don't think the second one sold out because the economy is not that great over there. People can't afford WWE price tickets over there. <laughs> Um, and from what I heard from Ben Hameen, the reason, <laughs> get this, the reason why Hunter put himself over, because you you guys saw the footage, right, where he works with Hunter, Jinder does, and then at the end, it's fucking boot pedigree. The reason why that happened is because when Hunter took the cab over to the arena or whatever, the cab driver told him he was more popular than Jinder in that country. Right. That was what Ben Hamin said, yeah. Um, there's 330 people in the chat, by the way. Well, 334. So thanks for watching. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It helps us out. And Renee, we've just passed 7 million views on the channel. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we do our top five? Okay, I don't know. Top five what? Top five worst to bring it bring it to the top. I don't want to insult people that are currently wrestling because I might, you know, run into them someday. But wasn't like uh Jake Hagar a fucking world champion at one point? Yeah. How was his drawing ability, ticket, ticket revenue? Not good. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just being realistic. No, here. just say how it is. It, good wrestling, great looking, uh, but promos weren't great. But yeah, drawing as a champion, I don't think he done well at all. Yeah, we're just we're just going by the statistics, not not being personal, like personally attacking the person, as, you know, just going. You had the title, and the gate receipts didn't fucking warrant it. You know what I mean? Believe it or not, do you know who was one of the lowest drawing champions? It was Eddie? Eddie? Yeah, that's shocking. But I I, I remember reading it and. They said he was actually one of the lowest drawing champions, which is hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, I don't know how that compares to today, but back then, apparently. Well, 
Renee, you've said to me what the uh, Great American Bash was like. What your was Eddie was. the champion then, though, or was it Bradshaw? He lost the belt to Bradshaw that night. That night? Yeah, that yeah. house was the shits. Horrible. Yeah. But that, that wasn't even the main event. It was Taker versus the Dudleys. That was the True, main event. yeah. True. Um, but then there was, you know, the, the Judgment Day pay-per-view. That was a two-match card. That was me and Cena. Mm. That was Brad, Sean, Eddie. But that was a complete sellout, 20,000 people, and it did 300,000 buys on pay-per-view. Right. Like people freaking out. Oh, AEW did a hundred thousand buys. Oh my God! SmackDown back then was was clearly the B show. There was no. It was the B show, and we were doing three hundred thousand buys. And that's when they had two pay per views a month. And every three months they had the big four. One of the big four that we were all together. Someone just said that he didn't get a push with the belt, but he got pushed to the main event. Mabel. Yeah. But don't forget, that was a period of time, especially when Brett was on top and so was Sean, that they inherited a really bad time in the business. Well, there was sex was scandals. There was, there was steroid scandals. There was a lot of bad press. You know? No, um, see, did Ludwig Borga ever go for the title? No. I'm sure there was plans. There was probably plans to, for him to go for the title. Kind of go after like Luger. Well, the, so the story on Luger, apparently he, he was meant to win the title rather at SummerSlam against Yoko at WrestleMania 10. But apparently a day or two before the show, he was talking to some people and he was like, yeah, I'm going to win the big one. And management got wind of it, and that's why they changed it. That's the rumor, anyway. Rather, it's true. I don't know. You're gonna win the big one. That's what he said. About, well, win the belt anyway, or title championship. God damn it! I hope he said I'm gonna win the big one. Yeah, look at that. I'm the total fucking package. Well, that just goes. That just proves that you know what Vince looks for. It's not. It's all look. It was Hogan. Then from Hogan, he went to Warrior. Then he wanted to go to Lex Luger. By I'm sure. By crook, it's all uh -huh. on the look. By hook or by crook, it's all on the look. And then from there, Austin. But, you know, as soon as WWF bought out WCW, what happened? Well, they turned Brad Austin was... heel. They turned Austin heel, and they went with the son-in-law. Again, another Brad... bodybuilder type physique. He's never a body guy. Who? Brett. No, no, Brett but was always the backup. Yeah, but Vince originally wanted to go with Lex, but for, for I think Brett? guys like Sean, maybe yeah. Pat, got in Vince's ear and said, "Hey, listen, you know, you should go more with wrestling ability as opposed to," and he had a lot of heat on him from that steroid scandal. And you can put a guy like Lex on the forefront. That's just you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, well don't forget, Renee. He uh, ran with Diesel's champion because Diesel's seven foot tall. So obviously, body is again, again, like larger look, and like size. Yeah, he was champion for a year. Yeah, I'll say this too, real quick, touching back on on Big Vis. Um, have you ever seen a guy his size do a spinning heel kick? No, I rest my case. Like the guy was really freaking amazing for his size. But he hurt a lot of guys too, dude. He did, but he also looked the part. I mean, like, how bad was he hurting guys? Because I didn't never thought of it as like big news. I mean, test he hurt. Crushed, he crushed Taker's orbital bone. He fucked up one of the Samoans. Kevin Nash is back. He severely injured. Can't yeah, believe everything you guys read on the internet. You guys are such marks. <laughs> <man. Good guy. laughs> Don't you remember when Taker had to wear that Phantom of the Opera fucking mask? Yeah, I thought that was just like oh. some gimmick. No, like, so he, Mabel sat on his fucking head, crushed his orbital bone. Well, let's thank you know, Mabel because that was sweet. <laughs> when do you know? Before we went live, I'm actually watching the Phantom of the Opera movie. Which one? 
Uh, the, new, the latest one with Jared Butler. All right. Paul London, the CRT TV champion. Is that true? That's right. Okay. I will pin your VHS tape to the wall. Keep it. <laughs> Hi, all from Chilean Wrestling Fan. Question for Paul. What was oh, the best match that you ever had in Ruh? I remember the moment when you was in school and you had the Ruh logo. Thanks for the memories there on PWG and Pilagro Abejazaza. Arriba. Oh, thank you. So tell us about Ruh. What was it? Your best match that you ever had in Ruh. Oh, I don't know. There's so many. There were there were a lot of good moments at Ring of Honor. It's hard to say. I just had one good match. I mean, I had a, I had a really good, a couple good matches with Danielson, but I think the match I had with AJ Styles is the one that people tend to go to the most. So, yeah, me versus AJ Styles, Night of the Grudges. I never so, met Cozina. Heard a lot about him. Wasn't he Brian Danielson's roommate, Tony Cozina? Tony Cozina is awesome. I, I, I did his Kern Kenrana one time. Actually, the Lance. Archer, where he's standing on the inside. Um, I'm on the turnbuckle. He came in. I give him a boot or something. I position my legs on the outside while I'm seated on the top. He's standing facing outside. Do the Rana off bat over the top rope where he then takes the flip bump over the top rope to the floor. That's the Tony Casino. And uh, yeah, I do is awesome. Um, is that too was, like choreographed looking though? No, because no. the way he would do it, it was like he would always do it as like, look what I happen to have here. I'm just going to go for it. It was, it was sick. Um, I, I think he's. I last heard. I, I heard recently. I think he's training in like Hawaii or something. Or he's New Zealand. Oh, is it New Zealand? Oh, New. Ze that's crazy. There's a New Japan dojo in New Zealand. Wow. Uh, with that big, uh, the big New Zealand guy, Fala is that or something. The, the Maori people to get like oh. Maori train you know, people. It's just like getting a jump on the lineage. Or on uh what held back Tony? He's like very, very small, right? Very small in stature. Yeah, probably. He's like five he was like five six, I think. So victim of the times coming up. Yeah, because like today he would be featured. Today, if he was in his prime, he'd probably be main eventing uh EW. Right? Yeah. Certainly influenced a lot of those guys. Mm. Looking good, boys. Paul, thoughts on working Alec Price a while ago and memories with Divine Storm, Xavier, and Danny DeMonto. Alec is like one of the fastest guys I've probably been in the ring with ever. Um, and an insane athlete. He's a Boston kid. And... Um, early 20s, but that, I can say right now, it's definitely got to keep an eye on because he has some of that freakish athleticism and he just has a good uh, a good mindset for the business and like probably has more energy and an explosive kind of baby face way than anybody I can think of off the top of my head right now. So, yeah, I think he's definitely the real deal. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's so many guys that are just ripe for the signing. But for whatever reason, you know, they might sign way lesser talented people or, you know, these people have a fucking Instagram following or some bullshit or who knows. But just keep at it because they, they honestly don't ever know what they're looking for. And you never know when your number's called. So uh, I'm excited to see his career take off and keep growing and getting more and more bookings because I just, I think the world of him is really, he's, he's awesome. Um, and the other guys, uh, 
I'm trying to remember who was mentioned. There was like Quiet Storm and Xavier. Xavier Rest. That's you know, he passed away a couple years ago during the Damian pandemic. Damian Demento. Damian Demento. Demento. I didn't meet him. Damian Demento, the furry shoulder pads. Damien DeMonto. Devon Storm. Devin Storm? Devin Devon Storm. Storm. These were guys in uh, Ring of Honor as well. Okay. See, I um, th I was in WWE by this point, and I never followed Raw, ever. Independent wrestling? No, I knew, my dad's, I knew my dad's territory, some Canadian stuff. Guys yeah, but you, in didn't pick up, like, you didn't pick up like Pro Wrestling Illustrated or The Wrestler. What did y'all have, James? Like there was Slam at one point. What the wrestling magazines yeah. y'all have? To be honest, yeah. The only ones I bought was WWE magazines. <laughs> I bought what? WWF magazines when I was 11, 12. Okay, thir not 13, 11 or 12. Uh, 13, my dad... <laughs> started his promotion now i would watch wwf wcw uh and i would watch the tapes that independent wrestlers would send my dad to get booked so there's all kinds of like i come from a di total different you know i never followed the ring of honor i didn't even know what ring of honor was not saying that if i wasn't um exposed to that i wouldn't have gotten into it i probably would have probably been a big fan of it but you know i didn't have the internet till 1998 yeah i never you know what i mean i didn't know what the wrestling observer was till 2000 or uh dave Meltzer was till 2010. when i was in wwe i never read the sheets when i was on the road i didn't give a fuck. didn't have time i was concentrating on you know getting myself over and fucking you know what i mean getting yourself tan well you rode with me you know what i was into yeah um some people said the uh patreon link i posted ain't working so basically everyone if you just go into google or an app store if you just type in patreon forward slash cafe day renee that'll t that'll bring it straight up for you Yes, and tomorrow night we'll be watching Fast Lane. So for only five dollars, you can watch it with me, James, Jonah, and uh, have a gay old time. And you get unlimited questions as well. Unlimited questions, and that five dollars is good for a month, where we do weekly sh matches of the week, and we do a special on Wednesday. It's called uh, WrestleMania. We How do they watch it? Uh -huh. How do they watch? Fast lane on like Peacock or whatever. Yeah, whoever has the network, either on Peacock or if they're around the world and they have the network in their country, they can all watch it with us. What are the matches? Or what are the standout I have matches? No idea. Come on. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I quit watching the show. Uh, Come on. Cena, Cena's tagging with Valley Knight against uh, Solo and Jimmy Uso. Oh, that should be a classic. Uh, Seth Rollins. Defend the title against Nakamura. Oh, that might, I'll enjoy that one. Okay. And, uh, Nakamura, yeah. So there's a couple. And uh, also with the Patreon, you get exclusive access to our Discord group where all the fans uh, talk to each other. And I'm always in there as well. So it's a good place to hang out as well. Yeah. And the new Renee photo shoot that just happened. You know what? Yeah. I've had about enough of your, of your back talk. All right, all right, London. Hey guys, question for Paul. What was it like working with Nunzio? Paranoid. And do you think he was underrated as a wrestler? He was good, but he was fucking paranoid. But this is question yeah, for you wrestler. I mean, I like working with him. He's never heavy. He's a yeah, you know, he's like he's like that guy who's you know, he's I, I always like being around him he's always a fun guy like you know he, he wasn't a guy that i ever had issues with and you know it's like if you walk into a room and you don't know very many people but you see him we'd go over and start bullshitting and uh he did piss on my foot one time at the urinal like on purpose because he thought it was funny 
And I was like, are oh, you clown-footed motherfucker? Because, like, keep in mind, this guy, he's like five seven or something, five eight. Five six, know. five seven with like fourteen inch feet. Yeah, like 14, 15 inch feet. I'm not even kidding you. So, yeah, if anything, I should have pissed on his foot. Can't miss it. Can't miss it. I remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just one of the. I remember him and Spike in particular drinking like they were putting like vodka in their Gatorade before the matches, that. right? For the match, so like they'd get out there and just fucking potato you. And you have to like start shooting on them just to like fucking calm them back down. And be like, what the fuck, dude? Like, just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they like, br- their breath is like just like you're just like, fuck, man. Like, how much did you drink? Like, ah, what goes to my fucking electrolyte? The electrolytes goes to your fucking veins faster. Like, okay. Spike was pretty annoying when he got drunk. Yeah. Like that substitute, that hipster substitute teacher that tries to be cool. I remember we had a group flight. One, it was like in the morning, like a house show loop, but we all had a group flight, and he was drinking on the on the flight. And I got up to use the lavatory, the urinal, whatever bathroom, and then he stands up and stops me, and he goes, "Take a shot," like trying to big dog me because he's like older or whatever. And then I said, fuck it, I was not in the mood. So I just took and took the shot of Jack. And he's like, oh, you've completely redeemed yourself. Like, I have to prove myself to you. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Piper Niven deserves a world title run. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's great. She's a sweetheart. What's up, yeah. guys? Been a while. Just started a pro wrestling school this week and firefighting. Wow. Any tips for a beginner wrestler like me? Quit. That's so fucked up. Paul, what do you think of Scream Six having three killers? Okay. I called it. I didn't even make it fucking ten minutes into Scream Six. Okay, I turned that crap off. I have this thing where if a movie early on Does something that just to me defies logic. Like it's just like no. It's just to me it's a bad sign. Um. And so with this, um, I think early on, I can't even remember, but like, it's when they reintroduced Courtney Cox's character, and she, I think, uh, or like the two girls. Somehow she approaches the two girls, uh, like Wednesday Adams and whatever that other girl is. And, and just because they're having a conversation, all the like press and paparazzi just kind of like drifts away. And then like next thing you know, they're like far off away. I'm like, there's no – like they would be swarmed. Like they would have to get into their cars. Like why else are these people even here? It's like for them. I don't know. This is, it's such a minor thing, but it's something where I'm just like, this is. It was just so. I don't know. I. How many? I don't know. But how many more fucking screams do we need? Like, I like scream, but like, go back Mike to like seven. a. Mike and number seven. I know they are, and it just. There's too many people that are tough. They get stabbed like thirty times, and they still live. And you're just like, what? This dork. Um, you know, I, it, feel that was, way, I feel that way about the fucking Friday the 13th and Freddy Krueger movies, personally. So you just have a that's that's a like a negative connotation you put onto it as being like a slasher film, but there really isn't off the top of my head anybody that gets stabbed multiple times and lives in those movies. I mean, they get pretty definitively killed and entertaining. Jason, when- Jason never dies. No, okay, well, I'm talking about Jason, yeah, but, they, you know, there's some creative ways to bring him back. No, there's the one kid guy in um, Scream 6. He's in Scream 5 as well. He literally gets stabbed, like, eight or nine times, and he survives at the end. And I'm like... Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's because he smokes some angel dust. That stuff turns into Superman. Probably. 
Brendan, 84. I like you know, Megan better than Scream 6. Let me just put it that way. I'll leave it at that. I liked Megan better because I was like, Scream, man, I can't watch. This is so stupid. I put on Megan out of dumb curiosity and actually liked that better. As dumb as that got later in like the third act, you're just like, oh, my God. But that was better to me. That was more entertaining. Sorry. 85% is in the editing room. That's right, Brian. Congratulations. Big Coca Cola campaign commercial he has uh, airing in Canada. Yeah, so man. He's, uh, he's getting a lot of work. See, you come on the cafe, good things happen to you. That's right. That's right. Who wins a shoot? Shamrock, Blackman, Brock versus Haku. Fuck, I don't Haku. know. Haku. <laughs> the answer is always Haku. That's a good four way. Hey, Paul, have you ever seen the movie Basket Case? Oh, no, I need to. I know there's a second one too, but I really need to. Basket Case is one that I'm very high on. I'm, I've been hunting down for it. Um, I told you I watched that last night from Beyond. Jeffrey Combs. Yep. Barbara Crampton. Hell yeah. That's a classic too. I need to watch it. You worked with her recently, didn't you? This year, Barbara Crampton. Yeah, it was a very brief interaction, but you know, yeah, nice lady. Renee, do you think John Cena spent time on Vince's bearskin rug? Uh -oh. Do I think do I think their relationship is bonded over working out? Yeah, I think uh, they probably worked out together. I think uh, everybody knows in order to you need a relationship with the boss, and bodybuilding is his life. And that's one way to be getting good with the boss is be a bodybuilder and have a great physique. I think that's Vince likes to surround himself with people that are jacked that because it motivates him to work out harder. And uh, he likes to be around beautiful women because that makes him feel younger and more attractive. And he's a, he's a narcissistic type personality. And, Yes, do I think their relationship is sexual? Uh, I don't fucking know. I don't care. But the fact that Cena's a bodybuilder is definitely what bonds those two. Uh, yeah. How good a wrestler was Hurricane Helms? Do you joke gimmicks like distract from a good... Um, listen, he made more money as being a character like Hurricane than he ever would have being Shane Helms. Okay? Those masks that he sold, the kids. Give me a gimmick like that any day of the week. Yeah, dolls too, like soft, plushy dolls. Yeah. I mean, he was a, yeah, he was talented. And uh, I would take that gimmick, sure. Anytime you can, uh, like Ray, with his mask and him appealing to kids, uh, fucking give me that. I remember one time at my WrestleMania 21 doll, I'm in a two-pack with Ray. Those checks weren't fucking small, you know? Hmm. Story behind Triple H, Peter Green, Lundrick. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Do you want to get this, Paul? you want to talk about this? Does this make you too mad? Not much to it. He just Does it like, aggravate you? Huh? Does it make you mad? I'll be right I mean, back. At the time, but if anything, it just re reflects like how fragile his ego was that he didn't think in a business standpoint in terms of <laughs> to establish a team by, because, you know, if you think about it, um, the natural progression of that save Basically, what it was was he had just he had just beat the tag division on Raw by himself, mind you, uh, beating Cade Murdoch. 
and then Umaga came down. It was three on one. And Brian and I make the save. And then he pedigrees us as a thank you. So naturally, wouldn't you think if you have the business in mind that you would come back the next week with a six person match? Um, I don't know. That just seems to make the most sense in terms of building somebody, but to instantly cut them right back down just to put yourself over like that to me forever said everything I needed to know about fucking Triple H, you know, and what a, what yeah. a, uh, what his mind is. And so and he was a coward about it too, because he blamed it on fuck to, um, Kevin Dunn. I was like, wasn't my idea. It wasn't, you know, I'm just telling you, it wasn't my idea. Like, he kept saying that over and over again. I was like, okay, we get it. It was your idea. He's just not, you know, he was afraid to say that. But yeah, it was just, it was a really shitty business move that should have gone the other way uh, yeah. to help four guys, really, because Mago was already in a big push. And like, you just buried the raw tag champ by yourself by beating them. The least you can do is put one of them back over in a cheap, the next week over in a six person and get the rub and just start building guys, you know, by association. But no, more important for him to spit his water and do his pedigrees. I gave him a sick pedigree too. I should have. And that's one of my biggest things too, is like, I obviously had, I known at the time that that was, you know, they just, I don't know. Like, obviously if I could do it again, I would have just taken them down and just started pummeling them because yeah, I would have been fired on the spot, but my, that would have been forever as cemented as like a real thing. And yeah. yeah. So that's my one real big regret. <laughs> right. Raw coach. Uh, could we get Andrew for VKM on tagged you in the tree? Uh, don't know who he is. Is that you know? Andrew WK? No. No. I'm sure he's a good guy, but I don't know. Just don't know who he is. Uh, could you have Sigler on here sometime? I'm a very big fan. What's to learn from him? Uh, yeah, we would love to have him on. Um, there's a couple of the uh, wrestlers he's recently run released who will be coming on the show. I'm not. I'm not allowed to say just yet because really? of the ninety days. But yeah, there's a there's two or three of them who will be coming on. So uh, stay tuned, everyone. But I'm not. I can't say just yet. They don't have to wait 90 days. They do. Um, I spoke to the one chap and uh, spoiler alert, it's a man. Um, they said, love to come on the show. Definitely we'll sort it out, but we can't do it to such and such a date because we've been told not to do podcast interviews. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. F R E Freight Productions and reviews. <laughs> Paul, what's Great better? Pencil, pencil, pencil socks, or flops? Leading independent cinema houses in Round Rock, Texas. These guys, keep a lookout for them because they're putting out some awesome stuff. Freight Productions, love them. They're amazing. Um, I would say push both these people off a cliff. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Eva Marie was the shits in the ring. Is that which one was that? The red hair? Oh, one? yeah, that's one of Brian trained. All Are you right. trying to learn how to do a slice spread? He tried. Really? Yeah, he tried. <laughs> she just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's a low. Yeah, I mean, she's pretty. If, if it was like the early 2000s, she would have been over. Uh, Sean, oh, do you have the munchies? <laughs> I have not eaten all day, mind you. And I appreciate you categorizing it as the munchies. It probably has a little bit to do with that. But I just haven't really eaten all day. Uh, mm. So for those of you who think it's gross, oh, well, sorry. Plenty of other podcasts. You know, go have fun. I want to eat. Hello. I'm hungry. Sorry. A lot of people have said, like, uh, uh, this is the most laid back podcast. And I'm like, yeah, we tried. That's what it is. We are just laid back. Yeah. 
Renee's yeah, literally man, take it like, easy here at the cafe, brother. Where are we at? Rum ham. It's your boy, Paul. Paul, what was it's that your song boy. you sang on your way to the ring and your local? Uh, do you change up every show or do you sing the same song? Um, I've changed it up a few times. Right now I'm singing Thunderball by the magnificent Tom Jones. Um, oh, yeah, he did. But I changed it up a few times. So when I'm in a town near you, you have to just come see what what songs I might be singing. Uh, chances are it'll be Thunderball, but I thought some curveballs. Do Sweet now. Caroline. No, fuck that. It's crowd interaction. Get involved. Sweet Caroline. I don't know. Oh, but... um, um. No. No. oh, Paul. Paul Renee, who is your favorite to get in the ring with? Paul Linden. Renee. Um, other than Paul, I'd have to say Sonata. Uh, Kaito Kiyomiya, who actually is in Canada at the moment. He called me up in the middle of the night. Scared? Huh? Scared? What? Were you scared? I was like, why the fuck is he calling me? I thought maybe someone had died. And then he calls me up, and he's got this face smiling. I'm like, Renesa, I'm Canada now. And I'm like, great. How far are you from Windsor? I go, oh, 16, 17 hour driving. It's like, oh, very far. I go, yeah. Did he have the Sam Paku eyes? Good question. He might. No, but he's an incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. I mean, come on, James. Where's Marty again? Show Marty Felba again. He's the best. Yeah. Do you realize we have nearly 1,800 people chatting? Sending ch no, That's man. amazing. No. 1,800 messages. 1,800 messages. We're wow. up to 1,770. Yeah. Just the, the, the interaction on the cafe is unlike none any other this podcast one. has. And this is why I try to say everyone, if you want to carry on talking to each other, join the Patreon, and then you can talk to each other there all it's the time. It's $5 a month, and everybody, it's a great community, and people make friends for life on there, and I'm telling you. What are your guys' thoughts on Brian Pillion Jr.? Well, they loved, the loved interviewing him, didn't you guys? Um, I don't know if he uh, was having a a bad day or if he was maybe uh held back because he was under contract and he couldn't really say much that's that's what i thought that's yeah what i felt you could tell yeah but well, he's signed with the WWE now though he is because at that time i was trying to get out of him but i understand once you're under contract you can't really you're you know handcuffed to what you can can't okay, read. so did you see the little whatever that teaser was for him? I did yeah. not. Did, no. Did you see that, James? Yeah, someone watching the TV and you got like the Bengals playing and um, all the little hints and things like Brian like Pillman. Flash of his accident and like. Oh, like to okay. Yeah, I think NXT bound. What about the fucking hype they got for this Jade Cargill? Yeah. They're Storm a... from the X-Men. What? She's like Storm from the X-Men. That's how they should market yeah. her. I, for some reason, I see Linda Miles. No way. She's way more put together, way better, like better athlete than Linda Miles. No, Linda Miles was an incredible athlete. She just didn't give two shits no, about it. No, there, she she was probably a really good athlete, but from the little that I've seen, this this girl is way more put together than Linda Miles. 
Lindo was fucking put together physically. Okay. That's a drawing. What was that? But, I mean, the hype is over her look because we've seen her in the ring. She just needs a lot of reps. She needs experience. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you see a girl like that walking the, the beach test. You see that walking down the beach, you're going to look, boy. Yeah, you're going to be like, hey, pick up your wrapper. It's in your living room. Pick up your trash. Um, what else is happening in the world of wrestling, guys? Have you all met with Enzo Amore? Have you met him? No. I heard Simon Gotch is a fan. Of who? Enzo what? Amore. Thank God we didn't do live streams back then. Wow. <laughs> I'll leave it yeah. at that. What was that yeah. from? Um. So when I was in Noah last year, I was on tour with uh, Simon Gotch. What's his real name? Seth Lesser or something? Something like that. He was Lesser? Lesser. Lesser. Like Lesser then? I guess, yeah. Anyway, he, uh, him and Enzo, I guess, they're not getting along. I mean, we asked him a question, and that we were doing tapes back then. We were taping this like we didn't do it live. And he uh, he was not in the mood to talk about that Enzo guy Does at all. Like that guy? Huh? Does anyone like that guy? I've never heard anything good about him. I think Blubber Dudley likes him. Maybe it's a New York thing. Does anyone who matters or was worth a fuck as a human being on this planet? For some reason, every time Mark has an opinion, all these dirt sheets go with it and like like his opinion fucking matters. And I'm thinking like who gives a fuck what he thinks? The butcher. What was Devon Dudley like compared to Bubba Dudley? Wow, the timing of this question. As in working wise for both ranks. Okay, Devon knows how to wrestle. He knows how to grab holes. If you ask him to chain wrestle, he'll have a clue. Blubber doesn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. Dude, I just saw Devon like a month ago, man. How's he looking? It's awesome. Gave him a big hug. Great dude. Man. We chatted for a bit. Always... uh Always got a smile on his face, always in a positive yeah. attitude. The thing about Bub Bubba is that he knows he works for Pops. He knows right. how to get the crowd up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he hates his life. Let's move on to a better subject. Okay. How did fines work in WWE? Would they just take it out of your next paycheck? I've never been fined. Wait. I was fined a thousand dollars for disobeying orders once, but I, I can't recall it coming out of my check. That's when I did the French tickler and I was told not to. James, are you there? Wake up before I throw dirt on you. I'm just look at that. Uh, how did fines work? Or what did take it? Yeah, how did they work out? Um, I, where's Paul? <laughs> Paul! Oh, just look at the <laughs> Paul, oh. they take out your paycheck. I guess I, I I had one wellness policy strike, two actually. The first one, I was supposed to not get paid for thirty days, so four paychecks, and I only they only took out two weeks. Right. So I was yeah. And then the second time I went and got help, so they actually uh, they kept paying me. They never take any money out. Overall, I must say, financially, I could never. I mean, even though my pay every year I went there went less and less and less. I think that was a test. Paul, did you ever get fined for anything? 
lesser. Um, I only got fined, uh, I think, once. For being late or dress code or? Cannabinoids. <laughs> oh, the wellness policy. Yeah. Did they take a whole in, month off? I was injecting cannabis. I was uh, taking I was taking smokable steroids. So did they did they like take out your pay for one month? Um or was it no, was it the twenty five hundred dollar back then? No, this is like it was either it might have been a thousand. Okay. I think it was, I think it was like they took five out one week and five out the next week, and that was it. No. Chavo Guerrero versus Bret Hart. How many stars? Five stars. Is this Chavo like Chavo Classic or like what are we talking about? He probably means Chavo Chavito. Eight, nine, I don't know. That's like two solid wrestlers. Mm. That would be pretty good. Mm. Seven, eight. A thousand stars. Huh? What's your theory on Zodiac gone real cold, real cold? What the fuck? What? Zodiac killer. In the Batman. Didn't he? He what? Didn't he appear in the Batman? Oh, yeah. As the Riddler? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind the new Batman movie, but it's fucking overrated. Yeah. Um, but that Zodiac Killer, that wouldn't be... Well, they never solved it, but I think the big theory is that it's... Uh, what was his name? Gary Post? Gary Poste or something like that? I think he was called. That's the big theory, because match and shoe prints and I think he had like from the descriptions from like the um, victims or witnesses the killer's supposed to have like these scars on his forehead and I think this Gary Poss I think he died actually about five years ago but he had like similar scars so that's oh, probably um, the closest fairy to who it is they never caught the Zodiac killer? no wow he's a worker all the gig marks. Could have been what a worker. His eyes. He had the fucking yeah. same pookie eyes. <laughs> uh, Jade Cargill looks like a dude. No, she's very attractive facially. That's a drawing. What is this heavy metal rendering of Jade? Yeah. Come on. I mean, look at those childbearing hips. Um, let's go to, we're at 48 Super Chats. Let's go to 50. Can we make it to 50 Super Chats and then we'll call it a night? What's going on in the wrestling world? Is there any, like, anybody get arrested or embarrassed? Uh, our buddy Philip Brooks is rumored to return to WWE. Are you There's kidding? Talks. That's what the word on the street is. Um, so the timeline says on them a lot of people think Survivor Series because that's going to be in um, Chicago All State Arena so he'll be making a return yeah, we're all probably. excited for that I wonder I, I'm curious I'm curious to see how they're going to book him all tucked between your legs situation isn't it well, hold on a second. We're we're talking like he didn't return there before. He did that fucking backstage thing. Yeah, but his claim was like, "Oh, I'm working for Fox. I'm working for Fox, not for WWE. My checks are right. from Fox." You know what he said, right. James? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but guess what? The ratings didn't fucking pop at all when he came. You know who that's... else? You know who was all? You know who else was on that show? Who? Trump. Who? The eye popping Trump. Remember Ooh. who was on that box show with, with uh, there was uh, Brittany Sarah. Knight, Soraya. She was on there, right? Wasn't there Renee Paquette, the uh, Moxie's wife? 
that Adam Cole was on there. Don't you remember? No, I didn't watch that fucking thing. We've been showing his picture throughout the night. Oh, come on, man. Really, yeah. man? Wasn't he on there at one point? I don't think so. Was he? I don't know. I mean, what? I mean, who? Randy was... Orton's baby oil dealer. What? <laughs> Is it true that Goldberg eats corn the long way? Um, Goldberg. Uh is a man among men. Yeah. Oh, Did you get along with old Billy Boy? Did you have any interactions? Or he wasn't there very long? He no. wasn't there long enough for you to really get to know We did a tour in Guyana together. And he, like, headlined the tour, but he never wrestled. He, like, went out there and cut, like, two promos both nights in the same arena. Talk about stealing a fucking paycheck. But like we visited hospitals and stuff, like Okay. Cool. Yeah, we go I mean I like Bill. Um as a person, like when I you could tell that not a lot of people wanted him there. I think there was a lot of resentment that he was making so much more money for doing little to no work. Yeah, but he's uh, also like spoken, he's like a really smart businessman, like He's not just like some big, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I mean, shit. Can't, don't hate the player, hate the game, I guess. But, I mean, he dislocated my collarbone because he didn't know what he was doing. And Sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's a famous sign. I'm surprised you didn't recognize it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's um, what the comment was for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's hurt so many guys. On the long. I guess my whole thing would be like, why don't you want to get better? You're making all this money. Why don't you want to get better and not hurt people at least? You know what I mean? But that's, I mean, I mean, that's what gets you paid. And that's. I mean, like, what do you think is easier to, to, to untrain? Uh, someone with like an MMA martial arts background like Ken Shamrock uh, or someone with a football background, you know, like NFL football. So, you know, whereas they go hard, 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 hard all the time. I think at least a fighter MMA guy has some wherewithal ability to hold up, like to, to hold a punch or to not murder a guy, you know, Right. I like, mean, I feel like at his program, just like, so well, don't forget when he was in WCW, he got so into it. Remember when he put his his own fist through the limo window and like yeah. fucked up it? Like he has one speed go, but you know, I'm in the, uh, at 19. I want that. I you know. What's your favorite Goldberg moment, James? Uh, probably him winning the belt from Hogan. Was that Halloween? Oh, that was in Atlanta in front of 40,000 people. Yeah. Was it Halloween Havoc? No. No, Halloween Havoc it was, was just, him and DDP. It was just the, the uh, They gave that away on free TV. What? The, uh, the pay-per-view cut out as the match started because they overran their time. So they, like Renee said, they showed it the next night on Nitro, full match, wow. and they had to refund that pay per view as well. So no shit. They lost. yeah, they refunded the pay per view. I'm sure they did. Wow. What was the one where like the giant fell off the roof of the hotel? Oh, that was. He went... Well, he fell off the roof. Then later on that night, him and the Yeti dry humped Hogan and. Giant became yeah, champion. Yeti night, wasn't that, it? The no, Yeti. That, no, the Yeti. I think that was a Halloween havoc. <laughs> that must be like 95. Love that. Okay, we're at 49. One more super chat, guys. Are you guys doing it on purpose just to keep us on here? I bet they are. I thought I we're on they are. What? I think we are we're on 50, not... we're at, No, we're at 49. 
That's a... Oh, right. Um, I know why. It's because I tagged one as a super chat. The uh, Patreon, which everyone, please. Okay, uh, here we go. We're at 50. What are Paul's thoughts on Hoovy botching the 450 splash and breaking his face on <laughs> What's your thoughts, Paul? Love that. Well, hold on. Did he fuck up uh, Chavo too? Uh, that was Kidman. Oh, I was Kidman. That Hoobie was a did, bad one. Hoobie did like the three, the 379. Okay. Onto my face. But I was okay. I mean, but they still made me go take CAT scans after like two or three in the morning. Poor Davari was my writing partner. See who's stuck with me. And Woost the Mass. Mm. Good times. Were you, you and Aaron Aguilera with me when Bob kicked my head in, right? It was just me. Aaron Aguilera think, wasn't there with us? I don't remember. I don't think so. I think he was. No, because we went to Syracuse Hospital... Man, I don't because we still had a drive ahead of us. Yeah, I remember uh, Robert went up to me the next day and was like, "Hey, man, I'm really sorry. I didn't know Renee was like you were riding with Renee. And I didn't mean to hold you up." So I was like, "You apologizing to the wrong guy." He wasn't sorry for that. He never said, "Hey, man, I'm sorry for doing that." I over exaggerated. I'll, you know what? We should do another deep dive into that so where I can get more specific into why. I'll just leave it at, did anyone ever see fucking proof that he had to go fly himself there like a, a fucking arrest warrant or a fucking, you know what I mean? Nobody's ever seen that. That story came out later when he had all the heat. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. It's getting late. Oh. Uh, in Oregon or whatever, in Portland or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the story was that yeah, yeah, he had to uh, car ticket, like get a warrant off his rose because he missed the court date. Right, right. Hey, Bob. Well, then they sent it to the fine to you in the mail. Yeah, but you know, my mail doesn't come to my house. It goes to my parents' house. Really, your mail goes to your parents' house. Even your paychecks. Yeah, where does your parents live? Right next door to me. Okay, but you get your paycheck in the. In, in the mail every week, right? And that goes to your parents' house too. Yeah, so you don't check your other mail? Who pays your bills? My parents. How old are you? 41. Um. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Paul London, I want to thank you for always being you, drinking your milk. What do we got? We got Fast Lane tomorrow night on the Patreon. Please sign up now for only $5. Uh, do you have anything you want to promote, Paul? I will be making my long forgotten return to Canada next week. Mm. Great Hamilton, Ontario. Hamilton? Canada. Hamilton? Where I will be in a freeway. Hamilton? With Rip Impact and Hello Hardbody. Mr. Creepy, Rip Impact. Um, and I will be returning stateside for a big GCW world title match. Why not go for the big one, boys? Why not go for the big GCW? I could have you face a championship. The Arizona Wrestling Federation Championship. Uh, do you know this Monday is Canadian Thanksgiving? What does that even mean? I'm thankful for, <laughs> I'm thankful for this podcast. I'm thankful that my credit's good enough that I could buy a brand new truck. I'm thankful that I'm off this weekend and I'm thankful for all the people that are here on the cafe. I'm thankful for everybody that signed up to my Patreon. I am thankful that next weekend I will be in Montreal, Canada, live streaming my matches. I am thankful for Paul London.
Oh, I'm thankful for you guys. When is your holiday again? Monday. So what do y'all do? Turkey and stuff? Is it how simple? What are the differences uh, besides the obvious? You guys make a way bigger deal out of it than we do. Really? Yeah, way bigger. We'll have the turkey. It's a day off of work, but like you guys go all out. I mean, Thanksgiving, especially in the South, holy fuck. You guys have aunts, uncles, third cousins, fucking dogs, iguanas. Everybody shows up for that some bitch. Unreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. We dig up graves. Yeah, you guys do some sick shit. But um, I don't know. Paul, let's keep in touch. Uh, we'll get with your schedules and see when we can come back on and uh, do this again. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, guys. We will see you tomorrow for the Patreon members and for the rest of y'all this Monday, Canadian Thanksgiving with the one, yes. the only, Kenny, the con man, Bolin. I will definitely not be on then. Uh, James, <laughs> have a great oh, time. Five, 500 people just unsubscribed. <laughs> yeah. Way to but, sell it. Really. But a run-in from your favorite stylist, Rico Constantino. He's going to try to show oh, up. Oh, you bastard. Yeah, so Rico will be showing up as well on Monday. With you ever ask Rico about when he went like swimming in the shark-infested waters naked? Yeah, but he wasn't naked though. He 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 made that clear. He said he everything was true, but he wasn't naked. He was wearing a thong. Awesome. Okay, but Paul, you're get get with me, get your schedule, and then we'll uh, we'll discuss some things. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm falling we'll asleep here. Yeah. We'll do. Well, maybe turn the lights on. You didn't sleep in a Sunday morning. I gotta go watch SmackDown, man. The Bloodline. Fuck. God. Oh, it's Friday. Yeah. It sounds like Napoleon Dynamite when you do that. <laughs> Is that what you're Gosh. Asking for? <laughs> Grab my arm. The other arm. My other arm. All right, now watch this. Okay. Next one does. I, you think I, I, go home to, I come home to Starla every night. I always like the roundhouse kick to the head and when I'm wearing a pair of these bad boys. Okay. All right. We'll see you all tomorrow and Monday. Good night. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>